Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here, back again with another episode of Fixing It Forward with the 1998 Ford Contour. Today's episode, we're going to cover some things that we've diagnosed in previous episodes. In my hand, I have a blower motor that came all the way from Car Park Kings. Thanks Car Park Kings, link in the description. I also have a new window to replace this piece of plastic that came from my friends at Pull Apart. Also link in the description, so yay! Then we got a little surprise for you at the end to go along with all this. Uh, in the process, once we fix this blower motor, I'm gonna check out the AC, put a vacuum on the system, see if it can hold the charge. If it can, we'll roll the dice, see what happens. We got a lot to do. Let's get started with the blower motor. Blower motor. I don't know what fasteners hold it in, but I believe there's just like three or something. Actually, I don't even see places for fasteners on this new unit, so we'll just have to kind of see uh, what's holding it up in there. If all I have to do is twist it to pull it out, that would be darn convenient. Let's get up under here and have a look. It also occurs to me before we get started, the electrical connector, connector is right down here and I could just plug this in and see if this blower motor works. It does. So I can be reasonably sure that this is gonna fix it. We'll also have to swap the squelch cage over once we get the old one out. How does this blower motor come out of here? Does it? All right, Ford, that was pretty cool. That all I had to do is twist that and get it out. Let's get that squirrel cage flopped over. What is this little giant macaroni looking thing? That is the cooler for the uh, blower motor. On the OE unit, there's this passage here on the outside. On this, we have to connect these two things, and I'm thinking maybe a little silicone spray, but there has to be air that flows into the motor to keep it cool while it's running. If not, it can overheat and die. I like using silicone spray on rubber things. It seems to work really well. Now we need to swap what is called the squirrel cage from this to this. Looks like there's this little retainer here. I'm gonna try to get that off of here. Awesome. Now, I'm thinking hammer. Some of you might be saying, Eric, is there ever a video that you've done where you don't use a hammer? I can't see why I wouldn't use a hammer. It's like one of the oldest tools ever. Now a punch. Air hammer would probably work even faster. Yes, use your gut. It takes years to get one of these. I suggest ice cream and beer. It's slotted on one side. The motor is too. I think you can figure it out. They gave me a new retainer. Now, if that's too difficult to push down with your fingers, you can take a socket, put it over the outside, and push it down on there. But make sure it spins freely and doesn't hit anything before you put it up in the vehicle. All right, now the tricky part is going to be getting these slots into the correct location and then giving this a rotation so that it stays in place. Uh, the old one, uh, these were designed a little bit differently. I hope this goes in as easily as the other one came out. Actually, that feels best right there. Reconnect the electrical connection. Get this up out of the way. And this shielding was already sort of down a little bit. I don't know where the clips are that hold it in place. There, that'll work. Let's try it. Working now. On all speeds too, which is good, because 
If it only worked on high, that would mean that the resistor is bad, but it works on all the speeds, so the resistor is good. It's moving air. Let's see. Panel. Oh, yeah. Now that that's been solved, I'm going to go out and put a vacuum on the AC system to see if it can hold a vacuum. If it can hold a vacuum, we'll put a charge on it and we'll see if we can get the AC to work. In the meantime, while that's doing its thing, I'm going to replace this right rear window. We must remove the door panel to access the components that normally hold the window in place. Want to have some fun? <laughs> I had to do it. I'll tell you what, I'll fix it. These are held on by a clip. I have this little hook I'm going to reach under and use to pull that clip out, back, off. I'm really glad I was wearing my safety glasses because it hit me square in the safety glasses. You're thinking, Eric, you're just, doing, you're just replacing a window. What do you need safety glasses for? Well, I just hit myself in the eyes, uh, but was protected. Here's that clip. This will just come right off now. And the clip, we can actually put it on now, is in there like that. And when we push this back up on there, it'll clip in place. Yeah, we probably, well, I don't know. How often are you gonna roll down the back window? At least it's gonna be glass. <laughs> so maybe, maybe not uh, as far as the replacement of this, but that's not my concern right now. There's one Phillips head screw down in this pocket. And just slide it out. Now these, I don't know on this one. Well, it looks like it's just clipped in. I'm gonna get a light in there and see if I can see. Didn't see you there. Hi. Well, this isn't telling me much. Oh, I see. Looks like there may be a screw that holds that on under this cover. It's very, yeah, there is. It was a very cleverly hidden screw. I couldn't even see this little piece here. It's right there. And this was over the top of that screw. I didn't even see it, it was so flush. Can you remove the screw? <laughs> it looks like somebody had tried to remove it in the past and broke a piece off there. Now, I feel around the outside here, there's a screw. Uh, there's a couple. One last one here. Ah, one on the inside. Hopefully that's all the screws. Oh yeah, this comes right out now. Simple enough. Wow, so it's got a set of pioneers in it. I, now I know why it was a part before. Where else do we need to go? We need to get this covering off. Is this just glued on? Oh, it looks that way. Looks like we're gonna have to undo our cool stereo speakers. There's a washer on that second one. No, oh, I'll just screw down there. Okay. Oh, nice. Got a connector that survived. Speaker's not looking so good though. Ah, uh, there is a lot of glass down in there. A shop back. But first I'm gonna take this off so I can get at this whole piece off of here and out of my way. Now I've got all this room to work. We'll get this vacuumed out of here and I'll see how this window attaches to this regulator. I think we can pull this down far enough. Yeah, there we go. Let's 
And I can just get into the fasteners. These are the fasteners here that will hold the window on. So now that I have access to them, I can remove those. This is what the window will bolt to right here. This is what shop facts were made for. Now, aside from that being the quote unquote right thing to do, a couple of other reasons. If I had done that, that could create a rattle every time you open and close the door. Also, doors are not completely sealed. In fact, this thing that I removed, that piece of foam, is called the vapor barrier. The reason it's called a vapor barrier is because water actually leaks inside the door past the glass and down inside of here. On the bottom of every door, there are holes that allow that water to drain out. So that way you have the vapor barrier between that and the outside with windows. It's like that on all vehicles that I'm aware of. Uh, so I wanted to unclog those drains so that the water could freely flow out and wouldn't collect down on the bottom of the store and rust it all out. We don't need you anymore. Although it was a pretty, that was a pretty clever setup though. I gotta admit, it was cut like perfectly. I'm gonna go get some silicone to lubricate the door or the window track with so that uh, it can move up and down inside of there more easily. I almost forgot to vacuum down the system while I did the window, but that's okay. I would have needed to unplug it to plug the shop back in anyway. That's my excuse, so I'm sticking to it. But watch this. I can do that now. When this thing showed up, it couldn't do that. I call that an improvement. Open up our connections. Low side here. High side here. Go get that extension cord. As you can see, there is no pressure in the system right now. So, we're empty. So now we will evacuate. Let's finish our window. The old window. Look who showed up. It's like, this is my car. My car. Anytime I have windows out, I always try to lubricate the window tracks with this. It's, uh, I'm glad I'm doing it because I'm finding chunks of glass still in here. Here's a new piece of glass thanks to uh, Pull Apart. But I forgot I need to remove those fasteners so that I have something to connect it to. Those fasteners are going to go right through these holes in the glass and it'll hold it in place so as you crank the window up and down it can do its job. I'm thinking these little pieces here actually go into the glass into these holes like that. Although no. I think these go through here first on the inside. Without the old glass, it's hard to tell. The glass has to snap into this, so the glass is going to push in from the back side and I'll clip it into place and then I will uh, install the fasteners. Now rear glass can sometimes be tricky to install. I don't know, I've never done one of these on this model, so I really couldn't say. can sometimes help is taking these moldings out. That can be useful. Sometimes you have to take this portion out. It's like part of the body. Maybe that's 
Maybe that's what I need to do. I'm not sure. But I've, I've had to pull these rear sort of wings out in the past to get rear glass to install. Front glass doesn't seem to be as difficult, but the rear ones, a little bit tricky. I don't think that's gonna be much help to us, really. It hasn't revealed much of anything. There's just more door back here. Well, they had to get it in here somehow. Looks like it was scratched up a little bit. I'm gonna see if I do to get these out, these moldings. This might be the key, because we're gonna need just a little bit of extra space. Maybe this is gonna provide it, I don't know. There just is not a lot here. All right, with that, with those moldings out of the way, I'm hoping. You know what, I may go one step further. I think uh, just to be on the safe side, I'm gonna remove the window mechanism so that I've got all kinds of room in here so I can just get this up into the frame. We can take it from there. Just gonna need to remove a few fasteners to do that. Just three eight millimeter fasteners here. I don't even have to take them all the way out. Well. That's out of our way. Now we got clean, open space. Hopefully the window will slide down in there nice. Well, it came out. Part of me just wants to see if I can just slide it down into the opening in one piece. Let's take this whole thing. Let me just throw some stuff down in there. There is. I wonder if this is how it's done. Silicone spray.
That's how it's done. Man, that was different. Let's see if we can get that regulator hooked up. Oh, I get it. These plastic things need to go in last because it slides down into a holder. Apparently in the bottom of that crank assembly. Bring this out so you can get a look at it. See how it's got this clip? The window goes down into this clip. If these are in the way, it's not allowing the window to go down into that. So I just need to pop these out. Now, when I slide the window down in, it'll fit down into this, and then I'll be able to push these through, hold it into place, and then run the fasteners in. There, now it's in there. Should be able to push these through. I'll stay in place while I tighten these. I get these in. take this clip off actually makes it easier to test got a window again I don't know about those scratches I don't know if that was me or if that was there or... either way it's a window it's not a piece of plastic so I, I would call that improvement. Maybe a scratch window? Like I said, that's quite possibly me. If I were to do this again, and I learned a lot with this, I've never done one of these on one of these vehicles before, but take the regulator off because it does have some sharp edges that are sticking up right here, and it could cause that. So learn from my mistake. If it was indeed me that caused that. Either way, we got a working window. A little bit of corrosion has happened here and it's made it a little big. I'm gonna have to squeeze that down with a pair of pliers so it fits down in there. As you can see, it's sort of pulled away down here. Let me re reposition that before I install it or else it's never gonna fit now that there's glass there. Yeah, just, <laughs> there's metal support underneath this part, but underneath this part, it's completely rotted away. I think it'll be fine, it'll seal up. Felt side goes towards the window. I know it goes in there like this. I'm just trying to find out which groove it goes into. I think it goes into this one. So see where this metal clip is? I believe it goes into that groove, but the felt side always faces the window. At least as far as what I've seen. Now for the inside, once again the felt faces the window. Now we just gotta put the door back together. Ah, might as well catch this while we're here. Looks like these go in like this and then slide this way. The inside, this one down here, holds it together. The reason I took this apart is on other rear door windows, sometimes there's a little quarter window back here, and I've had to remove those in the past to get these down in. I've never removed that whole structure. Honestly, once I figured it out, it's not that difficult, but it took a bit to figure it out, as you saw.
It's like a boat on a dock. <clears throat> it's my chair rubbing against the finish here. Remember I told you about that clip? You can just put it together like this. Once you've got it together, just pop it on and it won't come off. Awesome. A little hidden cap. That hides it super well. Clean the window and that's job done. Maybe those scratches will polish out. Maybe not. I'm not proud of that. If it indeed I did cause them. Now I've gone and done it, I made a clean spot. I don't know about those scratches. I don't know if they were there before or if I did it. Either way, it's better than the piece of plastic that was there before. It's been out of vacuum for a little bit. I would say at least 20 minutes while we replace that window. I'm gonna close it off, leave it set for a while and uh, see where it's at right now. Yeah, I can already see it's got a leak. Check it out. If it didn't have a leak, it'd stay around the the 29 mark, but it is slowly creeping up towards 20. So there's a leak somewhere. There's an obvious leak in this system. There's really only one way to deal with this. We got to put a little bit of refrigerant in there with a little bit of dye in order to determine where the leak is. It's the only way we're going to find out. So we have to sacrifice a bit of refrigerant in order to figure this out. I'm going to add a little bit of dye to this hose and we'll charge the system up a little bit and see where, uh, where that leak is, or at least try to find it anyway. We don't need a lot, just a little bit. I'm thinking that should be plenty. Got a little bit left in this can. We just need to put enough in for the compressor to kick on for this to circulate through the system. Once it circulates through the system, that'll be enough to uh, put the die in place so that we can help identify where the leak is. And I'm, I'm kind of trying to figure out how far I'm gonna go with this. It's late September, it's in the fall. It's not like we're gonna be using air conditioning for that much longer. So it really depends on where this leak is if I'm gonna pursue it uh, this time. We may have them come back in the warmer months and deal with it then. But the AC is used for defrost, so it can be useful in that sense. Actually, I'm gonna back it up a little bit so I have a little more room to work here. I won't feel so cramped before I uh, add the refrigerant. I think for the heck of it, I'm also just going to put it up on the lift since it's here. That way, if there's any leaks down underneath, we'll be able to find it easier. There, that's convenient. All right, let's run it. Turn the AC on. Compressor just kicked on. Compressor keeps turning on and off, but at least this will cycle it through the system. Cooling fans are both working. It's a good sign. And as far as purging the air, I didn't bother because it's all going away anyway. I'm just trying to draw the remainder out from that hose. This is shut off. Right now the compressor is cycling on and off. So we know that we've got our wiring correct. We'll just let that run for a bit and let that dye circulate through the system and then look for leaks.
Just for the heck of it, I'm gonna put my sniffer in the uh, AC vents inside just to see if maybe the evaporator might be the, the culprit here. <laughs> I forgot, you can't open a door when it's on a lift. If the evaporator was leaking, we should get a hit right here. I'm going to check underneath. I think it's all leaked out. So whatever is going to leak out is leaked out. It's around here somewhere. It might be around this compressor. It's leaked there. This is a spider detector, it'd be going crazy right now. Wait. I hear the condenser. It's it's a leak at the condenser. I can hear something right over in here. Warning, warning, danger, Will Robinson. Something right here, I can hear it. And maybe the receiver dryer. All these silly spider webs. Ah, there it is. See it? It's a receiver dryer. If you look through my yellow glasses, you can see it even better. I see a fine stop that. <laughs> so annoying. <laughs> How difficult is that to replace? Have to take the battery out, the battery tray. I think once you do that, they'll have all kinds of room to get to it. But there is very little doubt in my mind. There's no doubt in my mind that that receiver dryer is leaking. We're not doing that today, but I do have a surprise for you. The surprise? Well, in a previous episode of Fixing It Forward with this contour, I had machined the front rotors due to rust buildup, which were causing a brake pulsation. At that time, I had reused the old brake pads, and I'm sure some of you had an issue with that. And I didn't quite feel right about it myself. But at the time, I didn't have the funds to go out and buy brake pads, so I thought, hmm, how do we solve this problem? Idea! How about a GoFundMe for Fixing It Forward? And that's exactly what I did. I created a GoFundMe and many of you donated. Thank you very much. And as a result, I have in my hand a new set of brake pads for this Ford behind me. Because of you, contributors to Fixing It Forward, this car gets new brake pads and I think that's awesome. There'll be a link in the description to that GoFundMe project. Feel free to donate as much as you like. And it will go, 100% of those funds go towards things like this when we need it. Thank you very much. But first, let's get this AC stuff off of here and then get the car up in here and the wheels off. It's fun for me. Hulk smash! <sighs> Missed it by that much. pads. I'm 
We already lubed everything else up last time. We're just pretty much installing pads today. Voila. Next side. That was cool. Thank you, viewers. Pump up the brake pedal, top off the fluid, and job done. It is so awesome to be able to do that now. If you're not understanding why I'm excited, there's a previous video that talks about me repairing that hood latch. Link in the description, you can check that out. We made tremendous progress today. We did a lot of cool stuff. We replaced that broken or missing rear window. Also that blower motor. I don't think there's ever been an easier blower motor replacement I have done, period. I mean, I think screwing in a light bulb was actually more difficult, but that got that HVAC working. However, that led us to the point where we found the leak at the uh, receiver dryer. I'll look into that. Thought we were going to be done today, not quite. But the biggest part of today, this is the first time viewer contributions have contributed to fixing it forward. The brake pads that we replaced today were bought by you. That's so awesome. Special thanks goes out to Pull Apart and also Car Park Kings. And once again, thank you. Links in the description to everybody I just mentioned, including a link to that GoFundMe I talked about. Other than that, if you have automotive questions, I'd ask you to head over to ericthecarguide.com. There's a welcome video there to tell you about the stuff we have to help you. If you wish to connect with me socially, I can be found on Google+, Facebook, Twitter, also Instagram. Close each of my videos with be safe, have fun, stay dirty, and I'll see you next time on the next episode of Fixing It Forward. Thanks again.